Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Off the back of the incredibly successful first video in this series, 9 insanely powerful and easy weapons to get early on in your playthrough, today I'm going to be giving armor sets the same treatment. Super quick disclaimer before we get into the top 8, the last few and definitely most powerful aren't quite as early game as the weapons were. Unfortunately there just really aren't that many good armor sets early game. But to gather all of these armor sets only requires you to kill one boss and do one invasion. So firstly I'll show you the 5 that are super easy to obtain and then I'll take you through the few extra steps required to get the 3 most important most powerful ones. Which as I say you can still get pretty damn early in game, they just need a little bit more effort than the rest of them. So enough waffling, let's go straight into number 1 and it is the easiest thing in the world because we buy it right here from the first merchant you encounter. Carly, and the reason we're here is to buy the chain set. Now, as I did start as the Vagabond, I have started with one of the more powerful starter armor sets. So don't let that fool you into thinking some of these aren't really powerful. For someone who has started as a bit of a squishier class, the chain set is a really, really solid way to start off your playthrough. As you can see, some of the defenses and resistances offered aren't quite as strong as the Vagabond set, but it makes up for that by being quite a bit lighter, so you're a lot more agile. Also, as you can grab this set right at the start of the game, as soon as you've got a few thousand runes, it's a super easy way to give yourself a little bit more defense if you started off as a spellcaster class. That is it for the first set, so we'll now head south into the Weeping Peninsula. I'm going to warp to the south of the Lookout Tower Grey site and then just head southeast. And if you did see the previous video and grab all of the super duper early game weapons, you should also have this site of grace. And before long, you'll come to this campfire and we'll be able to purchase our second armor set. This one is definitely the most unique early game armor set, as it's actually made of a few different set pieces made of a few different materials. As you can see, we've got the Iron Helm, the Scale Armor, the iron gauntlets and leather trousers. This mixed iron set is actually fantastic. It is practically the exact same weight as the chain set that we just grabbed, but the defenses offered vary just ever so slightly, favoring resistance over damage negation. I actually think this is the coolest looking armor set that you can get without having to venture too far away from Limgrave. And I love how lore friendly the flavor text is when explaining the resistances and negations offered. So the helm here states that the cloth covering the mouth and neck provides resistance to poison. And with the scale armor, the cape covering the shoulders is made with treated rock lizard skin, which provides ample protection against fire. This is a very awesome set and well worth grabbing. Next up, we're going to head into Kaelid, so I'll meet you at the Rockview Balcony. There are two ways that we can get to this next merchant. From the Rockview Balcony, you can basically run northeast. But there's quite a few enemies and a lot of mountain traversal, so I'm actually going to teleport to the Third Church of Marika, head slightly north and jump into this portal. From here we can run southeast and do the usual run that we'd do, past the dragon, past the putrid avatar and towards Fort Faroth. Once we get near Fort Faroth we're then going to switch direction and head west, and way off in the distance you'll see the isolated shack that we're aiming for. As we're running towards this shack, I just want to say that as you've already seen, these earlier armor sets all need purchasing. And if you are just beelining it here right at the start of the game, you're not going to have any runes. So the two things I'd advise is obviously the dragon cheese that I covered in the most recent secrets video. But also there are plenty of grave sites around both in Limgrave and Kaelid that will offer you a plethora of golden runes that you can pop and get yourself loads and loads of runes. And then later on, as we go to Lyernia, there's no less than eight or nine balloons scattered around. And if you pop them, every single one will give you a golden rune six. So there's many ways to get yourself loads of money without having to fight any enemies. Now that we're at the isolated merchant's shack, you can rest up to de-aggro the dogs. But just be careful if it's night time because you may accidentally spawn the bell bearing hunter. Now you can speak to the merchant and buy the Land of Reeves set. This is the starter set for the Samurai and is going to be one of the most powerful sets that we're grabbing today. I had actually forgotten just how solid some of these resistances were. You can see here looking at the helmet, you do take a hit in a couple of stats, but it is lighter and pretty much improves your defenses in every single way. 
the armor itself does have quite reduced physical damage negation, but the resistances and the elemental negation are insanely powerful. So really good for status effects and enemies that cause elemental damage. And again, the gauntlets and the greaves are pretty much just a straight up improvement on the set that we were just wearing. The Land of Reeves flavor text also has some pretty damn cool lore, and I really, really hope we get to expand on that during one of Elden Ring's many, many DLCs, because I really hope it gets many DLCs. Yeah, so overall, this is a surprisingly powerful armor set, and really worth coming here and grabbing if you didn't start as the samurai. Also, as we're here, if you come to the edge of the cliff here, you can actually take out this scarab and get the Ash of War Sky Shot, which I don't think I have ever used in my life. This sounds so cool, and I will be applying this to a bow and trying it out. Bit off topic there, this isn't a Things You Missed video, stop it, don't. <laughs> but it was here, and I thought that was really cool, so I wanted to show you. And now that we've done that, assuming you haven't already, rest up at a site of grace and tell Melina that you're ready to go to the round table hold. This is a really easy one. Once you get here, head through the left door, speak to the Twin Maiden Husks, and you can purchase the Knight set. The weight is exactly on par with the Vanguard Knight set, apart from the Knight's Helm, which is 0.6 heavier. Everything else is identical. And the only real difference is the Knight set favours more of the damage negations, whereas the Vanguard Knight set favours the resistances. Also, the night set is slightly too pristine for my liking. I really like the worn, rough look of the Vanguard set. So, yeah, not my favourite, but very easy to pick up. And it makes you feel so incredibly Dark Souls 1 that I had to include it on this list. Now I'll meet you right at the north of Limgrave as we journey into Lyurnia. I will blitz through this section as quick as possible because most people probably know this by now, but I don't want to exclude those who don't. So let's make this nice and quick so I'm not boring you. So meet me at the north of Limgrave at the Stormhill Shack and we're basically just going to keep running north. Eventually you can run past this finger reader crone and jump off the edge of the bridge. Now hang a left and traverse up these rocks. Turn right and you can run through this very long passage with a few wolves. Once you get to the end you will be in Lyurnia. You may as well light this site of grace whilst you're here, just so you've got it. And then we are just going to keep heading northwest until we get through the camp and into the lake itself. Light this grace site as you're here, just so you've got a checkpoint. And just a little bit further north, you can also grab the first section of the map for this area. Now we're going to head much further northwest, and I'll show you the map in just a second once I've grabbed the grace site for Laskiar Ruins. Now we are just going to run and run and run very far northwest. On the way, eventually, as we lift enough of the fog on the map, you'll see the symbol for another map obelisk just here, which you can grab if you want, just to orient yourself. And eventually, you'll make it here to the Temple Quarter, and just at the other side, you can light this Site of Grace. Once you've lit that Site of Grace, run north. You'll start to see a load of Cerulean flying scarabs, and it's at this point you know you're in the right place, because you want to run behind the dragon and grab yourself the Academy Glintstone Key from this corpse. Now we can run back the way we just came and eventually come to the Academy Gate Town where we can run up these giant stairs and into the Academy itself. Now that we are here, head up the lift, up the stairs and through the door. Once we get in this next room, we can just beeline it through and light the Sight of Grace. And finally, as we leave this building and head outside into the graveyard of magical mystical zombies, we are now in the area we need to be for the next armor set. You now meet me at the other end of this graveyard, just beating up the last zombie. You don't need to kill any enemies in this area, I will show you exactly where the armor set is so you can run straight there, but I went through and carefully cleared out the area just so it was easier to show you. So from the entrance to the next area where we've just killed this last zombie, head right and go west. At the edge of this cliff you can drop off and you'll see three zombies worshipping this big gravestone. And it is here that we can grab the Karian Knight set. Now we're going to run to safety and have a look at it. The Karian Knight set once again is pretty much identical in weight to the Knight set, but it specifically has more magic negation and less physical negation. 
Also, it's quite a few people's favorite armor set, and it's easy to see why. It does look very, very cool, and up to this point in the game, especially if it's your first playthrough, you haven't acquired any cool armor sets up to this point. This is the first one you've actually been able to loot, rather than specifically run to a shop and purchase it. So this is the first point in which the game rewards you for your efforts and allows you to look hella cool. Now we've got that, we can leave the academy and start our journey to the Altus Plateau. There is just one more very important step before we go to the Altus Plateau, or we won't be able to acquire the final and best armor set on this list. So, meet me back at the Laskyar Ruins, and then we will head northwest until we get to this shrine and meet Raya. Once you've spoken to her, agree to grab her necklace, then keep running northwest until you get to the Boil Prawn Shack. From here, agree to purchase the necklace from the Black Guard. Hear the best voice line in the game. Tits. Now head southeast and give Raya the necklace. Perfect, that's her bit of the journey done. So the next thing we need to do is get to the Altus Plateau. I'm going to be making a detour up to the northeast of Liurnia so I can upgrade my weapons at Smithing Master EG because this is the point of the video where we need to defeat our only boss. So we want to be somewhat strong. There are two main ways to get to the Altus Plateau. One of them is by finding both halves of the Lift Medallion, one found in Fort Faroth and one found in Fort Height. And the other one, the method I'll be using, is by going through the ruin strewn precipice and defeating Magma Worm Makar. Now, having done this myself, the medallions might be easier. So if you are struggling with this boss, maybe go and do that instead. But if you do want to do it this way, join me on the journey and let's go. I did want to just point out one thing that happened on the way. As I leave EG and I'm running past Caria Manor towards the Altus Plateau, firstly, if you didn't know, if you hug the right hand side of these cliffs, all of these magical arrows will miss you. And then as we're getting to this lake, as you probably know, there's an invisible scarab here. I genuinely have the hardest time with these scarabs. And I had to leave this in because I am super impressed with myself. <laughs> yes, I am about to show off. Please let me have this. This is complete luck and I was so proud of myself. I'm running past and just casually take out this scarab. First try. I was just planning on missing and just running past it and just not even caring. And I was so, so happy with myself. I had to share this with you. On that note, is there anything you've ever done like that that's just so out of character for your gameplay? Like, oh my god, I'm actually maybe more skilled than I, re than I realized I was. Yeah, I just loved that. I had to leave that in. Please, share any awesome moments with us. I'd love to hear them. Anyway, now we're going to keep heading northeast through the chasm and eventually lighting the grace at the bottom of this ladder as we make our way into the ruin-strewn precipice. I will leave most of this footage out because it's literally you just running up ladders and lifts and ladders and lifts until eventually you will get here and have to face this singing bat. She can be an absolute pain in the ass. And as you see here, I do fumble it the first time, but do manage to get up this ladder. So maybe consider taking her out. It is a very challenging segment and can ruin your run. But nonetheless, once you finally make it past her, progress a little bit further. Eventually you will see two more, but you can just run past them, jump on the lift and get up. Now we can finally rest, we're through the ruin strewn precipice, and just before we enter into the boss room, summon Great Horned Tragoth. He will help you, especially if you're underleveled like I was. And you can also summon the Black Guard, but having both cooperators will increase the boss's health significantly, and the Black Guard really isn't that great. He usually just gets himself killed by the lava. So we'll just use Tragoth, and let's go and mess up Magma Worm Makar. I'll skip most of this fight as it is long and tedious because we are incredibly underleveled and it's basically me just spamming spells and having Great Horn Tragoth carry us. <laughs> but now we are finally in the Altus Plateau. Once you've rested at the site of Grace, just over the brow of the hill, get on your horse and start running through these broken down carriages. And before long, you'll get here and you'll be able to loot the ruler's set. This set does just contain a mask and a robe, and it's definitely the weakest set on this list. The reason I thought I'd bring it up is because it's a very easy to obtain set, and one of the first that you'll encounter that actually increases your stats. The mask will give you an extra point in faith. I must admit, I do find the mask very disturbing though, so we won't be leaving it on for long. You've seen it, this is the ruler set. Now let's continue on to the two most important sets on this list. 
Keep running north and in just a few seconds you'll meet me where I am now. Here you want to activate the Erd Tree Gazing Hill Site of Grace and then just as you step foot in this part of the Lux Ruins and go round the corner you will meet Raya who will invite you into the Volcano Manor. Raya's other spawn location if you opted to use the Grand Lift is literally right in front of you as you step out of the Grand Lift but just know that you do have to rest at a Site of Grace before she will spawn so, now we're at Volcano Manor, light the Site of Grace and speak to Lady Tanith to get the drawing room key. Then you want to open one of the last two doors on your left, they both take you to the same room. And most importantly, you can grab the letter from Volcano Manor. Now I'll open the map and we'll go back to Limgrave and you'll see we now have a Volcano Manor request to take out Istvan. Teleport to your closest Site of Grace and head there. I actually found Old Knight Istvan more difficult than Magma Worm Makar. You only have half your potions and you also cannot summon neither players, nor NPCs, nor spirit ashes. And at low levels he is an absolute tank. So at this point I think I will ask my lovely wife and editor if she could leave in a very brief montage of all of the times I got absolutely wrecked by this dickhead. <laughs> and then I will very briefly talk you through my final successful attempt. So now finally you meet me here, invading him for the final time. We will start off by spamming a few rock sling and getting his health down to about three quarters. And at this point it is just a very patient, very cautious guard counter fight. The scaled armor set that he wields and the exact reason that we are here is so insanely tanky that it is impossible for me to break this guy's poise. So there are no reposts and no backstabs, it is literally just being very very cautious and guard countering and guard countering until he finally dies. There are a few very clutch moments even during this final successful attempt. But finally he has been defeated and we now have the full scaled armor set. Which, for its weight, is one of the most powerful sets in the game. Chances are, early game, you won't be able to wield this with a medium equip load. You will be slow rolling with a heavy load. But it is so stupidly strong that it might actually be worth it. This set is absolutely phenomenal in so many ways. And as the text states, the corroded metal is reinforced with rock hard scales, making it highly effective against non-physical attacks. So it is just inherently really tanky against physical attacks, and then with the added scales, it can also deflect non-physical attacks as well. This set is an all-round powerhouse. And then for a final reward, the icing on the cake, the cherry on top, you can go back to Lady Tanith at Volcano Manor, let her know the contract has been completed and be rewarded with the Magma Shot spell. And now for the final armor set on this list, meet me back at the Erd Tree Gazing Hill and we are going to start running north through the Wyndham Ruins and into Mount Gelmir. Ignore the Tibia Marina and once you jump off this cliff, grab this Site of Grace just in case something goes wrong. Now you can just keep heading north through the canyon, avoiding all of the giant flame spouts. And eventually, when you get to the other end, you will see a cave sealed by two stone sword keys just in front of you. Head in here and we will be in Seathwater Cave. Now, you can make this a hell of a lot easier for yourself than I did. I stupidly came in here with no torch, no lantern, nothing that allows me to see in the dark. Luckily, I somehow fumble my way to the armor set, so let me talk you through it quickly. The first section of the cave is very linear, so just progress through until you get to this crystal cave moss and carefully drop down into the pool of poison below. As you come out into this first open room, facing to the west where the room forks to the left and the right, take the right path. You'll now see four rot mages circling around. Run behind them and drop down. Now head southwest through this little hole in the wall. 
There's a few rats here that you can take out or simply ignore and just keep following this cave up and round. You'll now be above where you just were. I'm just going to knock this rot mage off and then carry on heading southeast. Now you will be in this room with loads of rot mages and a giant poison Miranda bloom and you can loot the mushroom set. This is it. You have just grabbed probably the best armor set in the whole entire game. So I will now die so we can review it. The reason the mushroom set is so good is because of its resistances, specifically the immunity. When wearing this entire set, you are practically invulnerable to scarlet rot and poison. And I don't mean that it won't deal any damage to you, but the build-up is so slow that you can even safely traverse the likes of the Lake of Rot, which you will come to way later on in the game. Obviously, the Mushroom set offers you practically no damage negation, physical or otherwise, but its resistances are so good that in very niche situations, nothing else will serve you as well as this set. It is so powerful in the situations where it is needed, and it is well worth this detour. Using the Scaled set for combat and the Mushroom set to traverse the unfriendly environments, you will be absolutely sorted for the majority of your playthrough. You now have the 8 best early game armor sets and the 9 best early game weapons. Combined, you can be an absolute powerhouse and make this game your bitch. If this is also well received, I may also do easily accessible, powerful spells and talismans if people want that. Because I think this is a great idea for a series to help all of the new people that will be coming to Elden Ring with the holiday season around the corner and with the DLC hopefully on the horizon. So all that's left for me to say is, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.